So again, man, just super, super excited. So, so the, 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 the title of my message is very simple. It's the Greek word for baptism. It's baptizo. And that word baptizo, which we get our English word to baptize, simply means to fully immerse, to be fully immersed, to be submerged. Um, and, but, but the thing is, there's a deeper meaning than just going under the water. It's more than that. It actually represents a, a spiritual union between us and God, right? God our Father, the Son Jesus, and His Holy Spirit. A complete immersion in them, a complete union, a perfect union with them. And so there's some things about baptisms that I think um, have been maybe misunderstood in some circles. And I would just simply say this, that baptism is not, uh, baptism does not make you a believer in Christ Jesus. It shows that you already are a believer in Christ Jesus. Baptism does not save you, but baptism shows that you've already been saved. You've already given your life to the Lord. Baptism is not the event that gets you filled with the Holy Spirit. Baptism shows that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit of God. If I had to give you an analogy, I know last week I was talking to you about the wedding ceremony and how God chooses the wedding to demonstrate his nature and his love to us. He uses a wedding. And baptism is, in my opinion, very closely related to a wedding. And so for those reasons, I think it's important that we don't, pardon the pun, that we don't water down baptisms, right? But, and I feel like for far too long it has been watered down. We've, it's been very cheap. It's been very quick. It's been very subtle. You know, a little sprinkle here, a little dunk there. You know, we're having a pool party. I get it. We want to have fun. But, but it's, I think there's, there's such a deeper meaning and there's such a, a, a greater spiritual implication to baptisms that I actually wanted to just take time and get you to, to, to truly hear and hear it with your heart. Because again, we want to activate faith for what we're about to do today. And so just like a wedding ceremony, like today I'm wearing my, my wedding ring. And so my wedding band simply uh, signifies that I already am married, right? But it is my outward display to the world that says I'm off the market, right? I'm taken. That's what water baptism is. You make your decision with the Lord. You give your heart to Christ, right? You surrender your life wholehearted to him. You can do that in, in the privacy of your living room. You can do that in the, like my case, I did it in my car driving from Fresno to San Diego. I cried out to the Lord and he responded to me. And I was, I was saved in that moment. I was filled with the Holy Spirit in that moment. Everything changed. Now, the rest of my life has been an unfolding and an unpacking of that decision that I made. But my baptism was a public display to everyone. It was me going public. It was me coming out saying, I'm getting married. I'm married now. I don't belong to you anymore. Friendships were severed. My I do to her represented an I don't to so many people. My yes to her represented a thousand no's. My joining my life to her represented me dying to so many other relationships. Same with the Lord. Your baptism is a public display saying, I'm not doing cute church. I'm not just like, you know, putting my toe in the water. I am getting fully immersed. I'm going all the way in, all chips in. We're all in. That's the significance of a water baptism. Now, we are saved, in fact, by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. And as I mentioned, at the moment that, that you are saved, you're also filled with the Spirit. You are united with the Father through your faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we're saved. Water baptism, again, is just our public declaration. And we're doing it in, in the eyes of God. We're doing it in the eyes of our family, of our church. We're saying, I'm, I'm going public for Jesus. This is what this looks like. I'm married now. I'm married now. Y'all don't, don't know nothing about that. 
I got to keep my movies out of the scriptures. What's going on? Y'all know. Oh, we know, huh? Y'all know over there. Okay. Um, so listen to this. First Corinthians 12, 13. Just listen today. It says this, that some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized. Everyone say baptized. We have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. So, so one of the things that we understand about baptism, this full immersion into Christ, is yes, it is a union with God, but you are also joined into a family. Whether you are Jew or Gentile, slave or free, he's basically trying to cover all bases. No matter where you were raised, no matter what your last name, no matter what your, your demographic is, one family. Christ is coming back for one church, one bride. And he baptizes you into one family by one spirit. So this is kind of a bigger picture of what baptism is. Yes, you and Christ, you're one. You're going public. But he's letting you know you are now part of a family. You've been, you've been immersed into a family of believers. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says this. Therefore, I inform you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. And I just want to kind of focus on that last part. No one can say that Jesus is Lord, except by the Spirit. And I guess the point I'm making here is, with baptism... I know there's been a lot of misconception and, and people think that you make a, you give yourself to the Lord, like, you know, I believe in you, Lord. I confess you as Lord and Savior. But then we think the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit comes later at another time. Well, he just said, you can't even say that he's Lord without the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? The two go hand in hand. The Bible says that the Spirit, it is the Spirit of God that draws men to repentance, no one comes to the Father except by the Spirit. Do you see this? So the day you came to the Lord and you said, Jesus, I give you my heart, it's a package deal. Yes to Jesus, yes, Holy Spirit, and you are also immersed in the Father. All of them are one. So I just want to, just to kind of, kind of clear some, some stuff up. Now, there, there, as I told you, water baptism has a deeper meaning. Again, no pun intended. Water, deep. The jokes get worse. The anointing gets better. It's okay. <laughs> but it does signify a death, burial, and resurrection of our life because, because this was also Jesus' life. And so Romans chapter 6, they're going to put this on the screen. Romans chapter 6, starting in verse, I'm sorry, uh, Romans 6, starting in verse 3. It says, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, Certainly, we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for the one who has died is freed from sin. Now, there's a lot in there, but I love it because it's talking about our baptism, and we have been baptized into Christ Jesus, and we have been baptized into his death. Now, when we look at the life of Jesus, we also see that Jesus was baptized, right? Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 3, 16, I believe, is where it's found, where, where Jesus gets baptized. Jesus goes public for God, and what's interesting is the Bible shows that there was, a re, there was a response from heaven when Jesus got baptized. And to, to basically summarize, the Bible says that Jesus gets baptized by John the Baptist, and the Bible says that the heavens opened, the Father speaks, and he says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is my Son, I love him, 
and I am pleased with him. The heavens opened and God spoke when Jesus went public for him. And I can summarize it by, th- by saying this. When, when we go public for God, God goes public with you. He, he identifies you. This is my son. This is my son. This is my daughter. He's claiming me. I'm claiming him. The second thing he says is, I love him. And the third thing he says is, I'm pleased with him. This is powerful. Yes, this is what God says to Jesus, but this is also what God is saying to us. See, because here's, here's the thing about baptism. And I, I don't want to get into a lot of this today because, you know, in Hebrews, there's, it talks about the different doctrines of baptism. Moses' baptism, John's baptism. I don't want to get into all that today. It'd be good to unpack one day, but just not for the sake of time today. But what we see is that the Bible says that John's baptism was for repentance uh, of your sin. Like you coming to the recognition that you were a sinner and that you would go and get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. But then he said, one is coming and is here now who will baptize you not with water, but with what? You will be baptized with fire and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, right, and fire. And he was speaking of Jesus' baptism. He was speaking of our baptism today. He was speaking of the finished work of the cross. So here's the thing. Baptism was for the forgiveness of our sins. But Jesus was baptized. What sin did he have? He had no sin. Jesus wasn't being baptized to get rid of sin. Jesus, church, was being baptized because he was relating to us. He had come to unite himself with his bride. He had come to take our place, to stand in in place of us and our sinful nature. So there was no removal of his sin. It was a removal of our sin. He was pointing to the cross. He was pointing to the finished work that he was going to accomplish. He was, he was pointing to Romans 6, that your baptism would be a baptism of Jesus and a baptism of his death. And this is what Jesus was demonstrating to us. When we get baptized, it is significant of our death, our burial, and our resurrection because of the finished work of the cross. And God is pleased. And he identifies you as his son, as his daughter, and that he loves you and he's pleased with you. There is a mark of identification that comes upon a believer. This is exciting. So this is what we see. Yes. There's a whole lot more we can say about this, but... Again, when, when we talk about water baptism, I, I just think for, for far too long, it's just been, you know, again, we don't, we don't put a whole lot of weight on it. Uh, just it's, we, we treat it like it's like a religious box that we check. Okay, I'm just going to get baptized. I'm going to, you know, and we put it right up there with going to the store and getting some eggs and some milk so I can get baptized. And it's just like, there's not, there's just not a lot of reverence with it. And I would say, I mean, I would just simply say this. Would you just run off and get married today? No, you probably wouldn't. Right? This is like, well, maybe some, some people would. But <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, we did. But, but we know that it's a, it's a deep commitment, right? And, and there's, there's spiritual significance. And it's for a lifetime. And it's beautiful, and it's something that, that our hearts need to be engaged in. And so, yeah, even as, even as we're doing that today, I think it's, it's, it's just going to be exciting. And I think the more we, we have reverence for what it is, again, I just believe that there's a, a great, just a greater response. Not that we're twisting heaven's arm and nothing like that, but again, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I just want to make sure that we all have faith for, for what we're doing today. And so part of that is understanding what baptism is, understanding what it's not. Uh, but it is, it is a powerful, very powerful, and very significant moment in a believer's life. And if I had time, I would tell you that, that yes, that there is, 
there is a baptism for every believer. Yes. And it is not just a baptism of water. It is a it is a immersion in the spirit, in the spirit of almighty God. And I would also tell you this, and I will have to unpack this in the in the weeks to come. But um, I do believe that the moment you put your faith and your trust in Christ Jesus, as I mentioned already, you are filled with his spirit. You are one with the father through your faith in Jesus Christ. However, comma, I would also tell you that you have now been invited into a life of continual immersions in the spirit. Not necessarily ongoing getting dunked in water, per se, but there is an ongoing encounter with the one you met the first time. I've often told people, like, many times we fall short because we treat our relationship with the Lord like a game of hide-and-go-seek. And you find him the first time, and then, you know, if we were to play the game today, the game's over. The moment you find that person that was hiding, game's over. Not so with the Lord. We find him, but we keep seeking him and finding. We keep seeking and finding. We keep knocking and we keep asking and we keep searching and he keeps revealing more and more and more. Not that you're getting, uh, not that you're getting more of him per se. He's getting more of you. You got 100% of him on the first day that you gave your heart to him. It's not like he's rationing himself to you. Like you're not ready for all this yet. That's, that's not what he's doing. You, you have all of him. But as we continue to pursue and continue to seek, you will continue to find. And the Lord takes you through what, what the Bible describes as continual immersions. Be filled, the Bible says in Ephesians. He says, do not be Drunk with wine, which is debauchery, but be filled. And that word be filled speaks of a continual, ongoing filling. More and more and more. And I would also suggest to you this. I don't subscribe to the idea that we have to keep getting filled because we leak. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I get it. I understand what people mean when they say that. But Jesus said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So if he'll never leave me, that means he's not leaking. Does that make sense? You may think I'm like just, you know, picking a little fight here. Listen, if you think that way in your brain, it, be, it builds the framework of the, of the house of faith that you live in. So all, all those things, I've had to dispel all of that. I'm like, do we leak? That just doesn't even make sense. Where, where's the scripture that says I leak? I only found one that says I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Oh, I don't leak. Awesome. But he wants to keep filling you and he wants to keep showing himself to you to greater degrees. So I say all of that to say this. Today, you will be baptized and it is powerful and, and, and God will identify you and it will be done by faith and it is a work of the spirit. But again, today is simply a declaration going public to the world saying, I have put my faith in him. I am saved and I am walking with him. I just want the whole world to know about it today. And I want to walk completely soaked and drenched in the person of Christ Jesus. I want to be robed with Christ. And you are right now. But this baptism is that public declaration. It, you're putting on the wedding ring. Right? You're already engaged. That already happened. Today he's marking you. Today he's marking you. But this is not a one-time game of hide-and-seek where we get baptized today and, oh, that's it. No more filling. No, no, no. There's more fillings. There's, there's more of him. If we live to the ripe old age of 120, we, uh, at that age, will continue to have greater revelations of Jesus than, than we did in, in our early years. Every day, we've been invited into this with him. And it's beautiful. Amen? Okay. There's more I could say. I'm not. I'm going to make myself stop right now. So, good? How do you guys feel? Awesome. Where's Jordan at? I'm going to bring Jordan back. So, so what we're going to do is... Yeah, we're just going to just allow the Lord to do what he does. 
because his heart is for you. His desire is for you. And I don't know where this lands with you today. I know that there's many of you that are, are getting baptized. And so this is just kind of fueling your faith for what we're about to do. But maybe there's some of you in this place today that have never been baptized. Or maybe you've been walking with the Lord but not gone public. And so this will not be the only baptism that we do. There will be more to come. But just for the sake of, for capacity's sake at my house, um, I, I, I think we're at our limit today. Um, now, if you are like bent and determined and you feel like thus saith the Lord, I must be baptized today, just come, come talk to me. Come talk to Vicki. Um, we'll squeeze you in. But you know what I would love more than anything? This is what I would love more than anything. Just like a wedding day, just like we wouldn't run off to Vegas and get married, we would want our family there. We would want our loved ones there. We, we would want to go public with them as our witnesses, as support. This is what we want. This is, this is the best case scenario is what we want for you. So if it's really on your heart to get baptized, I would simply say, let's sign up for the next baptism so that we can do it. But we can be intentional about it. We can bring our family in and we can talk to them. You would be shocked. I've done wedding rehearsals where people have gotten saved at the wedding rehearsal. All Christian family or all Catholic family, old school Catholic, right? And, I, and I, as we're up there rehearsing and I'm talking to them about communion and what it means and how, and we're just doing the rehearsal. People are getting, people have gotten saved and given their life to the Lord. Not because of me, because the spirit is compelling them and drawing them. It's what it is. I say that to you because when you get baptized, it's an opportunity for your unsaved loved ones to witness Christ and a miracle that's happening in your life. That's what was so powerful about having these kids up here today. And everyone that, I was, you know, we're, you know, we're cleaning our house and doing the, the routine stuff you have to do to, when you bring people over, you know, and no one can go in my upstairs room. That one's completely off limits. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Act like you don't have that room. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get beat for that one later. It's all good. But just I was just talking to Vicky about it, like, and I was just I was like getting emotional on the inside, like um, like to the point of tears, just thinking about your decision today and thinking about like what the Lord is doing. This is so humbling like we're so grateful I just, I just don't take this lightly and I don't want you to today's a beautiful beautiful day and I'm excited for what the Lord is doing in, in the lives of, of this church and in our families and in our city would you agree church man yeah Ryan I'm going to have you come up and help me close um, would you just close your eyes church I'm going to I'm going to have Ryan come and Help me close out in, in prayer, just whatever the Lord puts on her heart, and then she'll have some announcements for you. But I just, I just want to pray for you, and then I'm going to hand it off. So, Father, I just thank you right now for just your goodness and for everything that you're doing and everything that you've done. God, I, I just don't have... I don't put any limitation on you and what, what you want to do in their lives today. I'm just, I'm just saying, Lord, have your way today. And, and I've seen, I've seen people come out of water from baptism with vision corrected. I've seen people come out of water healed. It is literally a new life with you. I'm expecting that. But I'm so grateful that we don't even have to wait for that moment. Like right now in this moment, people can be touched and people can know you and they can encounter a real God that loves them. So Holy Spirit, I'm just asking that you sensitize our heart, give us ears to hear, cause, of, cause us to be receptive to you. 
nothing off limits and no boundaries today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name.